Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. We're up close and personal today. Today we are going to be doing a chatty get ready with me and I wanted to show you guys my new and improved updated makeup routine. Chatty get ready with me's are like one of the few old old school YouTube videos that I will just never let go of because I just love doing my makeup and answering questions. So I'm starting off with the Trader Joe's sunscreen as my primer. I think I've been raving about the sunscreen for like six months at this point. I'm always shouting it out because genuinely it is such a good dupe for the Super Goop sunscreen. As much as I love the Super Goop sunscreen, I know it's not the most affordable to like the general public. So I love this sunscreen because it does the same thing, but it's cheaper and it's more accessible. Starting at the bottom, Berkeley housing advice on and off campus. So I'm going to start off with foundation. I use the Tom Ford foundation. I just do like a little pump, like one pump on my wrist. I take it and I don't actually put it all across my face. I just kind of put it in the areas that I need it. So it's really just like on my cheeks, like kind of in my under eye areas. And I like to put this on like directly after the sunscreen so it kind of blends in with the skin. I usually just use my fingers to kind of blend it out at first and then I'll go in with a beauty blender and a brush afterwards because I find this like makes it look all the more flawless. Like it just, it blends into the skin so much better and it doesn't make your makeup as cakey. Okay, so housing advice. I'm not even gonna lie to you guys, housing in Berkeley is really, really difficult on and off campus. They only really guarantee you housing on campus for your first year. And then after that, you have to go off campus. And honestly, off campus is a circus nightmare, to say the least. It's really difficult to find off campus housing. There's a really, really bad housing crisis in Berkeley, and I didn't expect it to be this bad because. I transferred from Santa Cruz where they also kind of had a housing crisis. So I was kind of familiar with that like situation and I figured it couldn't be that much worse than Santa Cruz, but it actually is. My best advice if you're looking off campus for housing is to start really early. I would start in November, December trying to figure out who you want to live with and start looking at places because people start really early and people don't really talk about the fact that they're looking for housing until like February or March. That's when like everyone starts to kind of talk about it, but that's too late to start. Like if you're starting in February or March, good luck, Charlie, because people are starting in, some people started in September. I remember last year, a group of me and my friends wanted to specifically go for this one house in September and we reached out to the people that were currently living in the house to see if we could take over the lease from them. Someone had already took it over the lease for them. So that's how early people are really starting when it comes to off-campus housing. Do not wait till the last minute. Do not procrastinate. I would say at least kind of start figuring out like who you might want to live with next year in the fall so that when springtime comes, you're already kind of ahead of the game. With on-campus housing, I would say do a lot of research. My biggest advice is don't live in Foothill. It's actually the worst on-campus housing that you can possibly live in. I lived in Foothill dorms last year. By the way, I'm going in with the Marc Jacobs setting powder. This is in the shade Omega Bronze. And I'm just going over my whole face with this. I like to set all of my cream products with powder products just so that throughout the day as I sweat, especially since it's the summer, my makeup stays fresh and in place. I think the best housing on campus would probably be Blackwell. Like that's the most modern of the housing. If you're in unit one, two or three, you're pretty good because you're in like the central area where all the rest of the housing is. Honestly, anything but Foothill and Clark Kerr is really nice because they're really close to campus. They're on Southside where like most people are and it's super accessible to like most of the major like restaurants and shops and things that you might need. Now I'm gonna go in with some highlighter. This is the Merit Beauty Concealer Stick. I got this in a PR package like a year or so ago and I really, really like this. It's like a cream product. I don't do concealer all the time, but sometimes I'll just do it like so. I'll do it down the bridge of my nose and then I'll do a little bit under my eyes. And I really like the consistency. This is one of the few products that I don't need to set with powder because after I like blend it into my skin, it kind of just stays in place. What does the law school process look like? So I'm not the most familiar with the process just because I haven't really started it myself. I do know kind of a little bit of what it looks like, but basically 
first of all to go into law school you don't have to major any in anything specific you could literally be a music major or a biology major and still apply to law school which is kind of nice because i know other types of like higher education like med school and dental school there are like specific requirements you have to fulfill before going into before applying into those schools so it's kind of nice in that sense but the main requirement that you have to fulfill is you have to take the LSAT, which stands for the Law School Admissions Test. Usually, your law school admissions is kind of based on your LSAT and your GPA. And then obviously there's, I believe, like a resume that you have to fill out. There are personal essays that you have to write, like a personal statement. And then a lot of schools tend to require like letters of recommendations. So there's just a couple components that you kind of have to like look out for for law school. But I would say for the most part, like it's not a super complicated, super challenging process to go through. I definitely love the fact that like you don't have to major in anything specific or fulfill any specific major requirements because it makes things a lot easier. And that's why I feel like when if you're planning on going to law school, like don't necessarily just major in something specific that you think you need to get into a specific law school. I would say just like major in whatever you're passionate and because that is going to get you the highest GPA possible if it's something that you're genuinely like passionate about or interested in. And that's going to kind of help, I feel like, your law school application. I am actually going into my senior year. So if I was going straight into law school, I would be applying this fall in this fall's application cycle. But I'm planning on taking some time off before I apply to law school. So I won't be applying this year. But soon, inshallah, I will be going through the process. And once that is complete, I'll kind of share like what advice I have on that. Someone asked for shows that I've been watching recently. I pretty much finished all of Scandal. Like I was watching it like pretty much all this summer and that took up like most of my time this summer. That's why I kind of got behind on like a lot of the shows that have been coming out recently, but I finished that and I was obsessed. Like that show literally consumed my life. Um, it was just one of my favorite shows and I cried when I watched the finale, but I actually really, really hate the finale and I really hate the way that Shonda Rhimes ended things. Like genuinely, there were so many things I hated about it and I wish I could share, but I also don't want to like spoil it for anyone who hasn't seen it because I know it's been out for a few years, but even myself, like I didn't think that I was going to watch it and then I just decided to watch it. So I really don't want to spoil it for people who haven't seen it. But I just really hate the way she ended things off. I hate the way that some certain characters won, whereas certain characters lost. And I think that was just like one of the saddest aspects to me. But Shonda Rhimes is just such a talent and like any of her shows are like such a hit. Like she's she literally did How to Get Away, Away with Murder. She did Bridgerton. She did Grey's Anatomy. And all of these shows are like super, super major successes. So the woman is definitely talented. Now I'm doing bronzer. I use a powder bronzer. I use the Sephora collection matte bronzer in the shade Amalfi. And I kind of just honestly go in because I have a pretty round face. I go in and create like cheekbones for myself. So I saw this TikTok that like if you want like the Bella Hadid sculpted face, you have to take your bronzer in like this and then go straight down like that. So that's that's usually how I do it. I started watching this show called Domina, which is like this. Um, it's like if you like Medici, you should definitely watch the show because it's about Livia, the wife of Gaius Augustus, the son of Julius Caesar. And it's just one of those really entertaining like period dramas that has a lot of political intrigue. And I'm obsessed with it. Surprisingly, actually, the main character reminds me a lot of Olivia Pope. And her name is Livia too, which is so interesting. I've also been watching The Summer I Turned Pretty week to week. I was so disappointed, let me, t let me tell you, when I found out that it was week to week. Like, if I had known if it was that it was going to release week to week, I wouldn't have started the show because I really don't like week to week. Like, I'm not a fan at all. I avoid shows that are week to week like the plague like i will wait sit and wait for a show to come out and wait months after it comes out to watch it just so that i don't have to watch it week to week and then i also like to give myself a little nose contour so i'll take the bronzer and i'll do it on the sides of my nose as well to finish that off i don't like it to look super harsh so i try to be like light-handed with this 
because nothing is worse than like seeing like the harsh lines and then usually like i'll go in with this like the fluffy foundation brush and honestly just kind of try and like blend everything together so that every not so that it's not super harsh advice for high school students applying to college i would say i was actually talking to my friend about this the other day is like don't have a set dream school like don't in your mind picture yourself only going to like one specific school and have tunnel vision with that because you really never end up knowing where you're going to end up and i think it's important to just keep like a very very open mind when it comes to the entire college process that's something that i definitely wish that i had and it's interesting because now that i'm like almost done with my undergrad people are asking me like oh like what's your dream law school like where do you want to go for law school and i genuinely don't have like a specific law school that I want to go to. Like I do obviously have like a, a list of a couple law schools that I would love to go to, but I'm not like, I don't have this like specific law school that I'm like, I need to go there. That's like my dream law school. Because I think, you know, we make plans and then God makes plans for us. And sometimes we can't see like the wisdom in the way that things work out until years and years later. So I think it's important, especially when it comes to like processes like this, to just have like a very open mind um, and to be open to like different schools. I think it'll be a lot more beneficial in the long run. Also try and tour as many schools as you can, like even just like before you apply and trust your gut, I think when it comes to the whole college process, especially if you're like in between schools, like really figure out what you want out of a school and go for it obviously take what other people have to say in consideration but i think you'll be getting a lot of opinions throughout this entire process from people around you and you have to remember that like while certain people have the best their your best interests in mind your best in, what you want out of your life or what you want out of your college process may look different than what other people want for you okay so now we're going in with blush i do a couple combinations when it comes to blush to be honest if i want like a very like pigmented blush look very rosy cheek rosy look i'll go in first with the rare beauty liquid blush i love this stuff uh, on my cheeks and then a little bit on my nose and then i'll set it with the maybelline fit me blush afterwards I, if i don't want to put too much blush on i'll just go in with this because with this like i feel like i can just control the amount a lot more than with the rare beauty blush which is a lot more pigmented so today i just want to go for more of a natural look so i'm just not gonna i'm not gonna put as much of this on i'm just gonna put a little bit on my cheeks this gives such like a airbrushed like blush look and i love it what are you currently reading? I'm currently reading Home Fire by Kamala Shamsi. I got this book rec from Jake, is it Jake Edward Books or something? And he recommended this book. It was in the video where he was talking about books that he considers to be perfect, so like literally no flaws. It's written by a Muslim author and the description of it sounded so interesting. One day my mom wanted me to pick up takeout for her and it was like a 40 minute wait and there was a Barnes and Nobles next door. So I picked this up and I started reading it and it is so good like I'm 40 pages in I'm enjoying it a lot but if you're curious about some of the other books that I've been finishing recently I actually just recently posted a video where I talk about all of the books that I've been reading um, my reviews my ratings and there were a lot of books that I included on that list that were like pretty much all of them were four or five stars so you can just treat that video as like a book rex video book rex video at this point now I'm going to do like the eyes brows eyeliner and let's start off with the eyeliner i like to use brown eyeliner under my eyes because i notice that it's not as harsh so i use the l'oreal infallible grip eyeliner in this dark brown color it has like the eyeliner side at the top and then it has a little sponge at the bottom if you want to like smudge it what's a movie you could rewatch over and over little woman oh my god the little woman 2019 version directed by greta gerwig is my lifetime favorite movie genuinely just love it so much i saw it twice in theaters i've seen it like four times overall i've watched it on a plane i pretty much watched it in like every setting and i just could never get sick of it because it is my lifetime favorite movie i love it so much the book was my favorite classic growing up so I definitely have a connection to the story already as it is, but I just feel like the way that Greta Gerwig 
went about adapting it. She just did it in such an excellent way. And I feel like she just really brought to life the story to screen. It is my favorite book to movie adaptation. I think it's just, I just love that movie so much and I connect to it so much that I could watch it over and over again and just never get sick of it. So sometimes I'll go in and I'll actually also add a wing, just connecting the wing to my under eye. But today we're not gonna do a wing. I wanna go for a more simple makeup look. So we're not gonna do a wing. How do you make your Instagram feed look so good? I used to like have an app where I would actually like plan out my feed. It just became honestly too much to keep up with. Like I feel like having a whole app to plan out your feed is just kind of a lot. Like you can definitely do it, but like, it was really hard for me to keep up with so i don't really do like i don't plan out my feed in any way but what a trick that i've learned is to make to kind of space out posting photos of yourself on your feed like for example space out your pictures of you like selfies or like outfit pictures of you with photos of other things so that your feed doesn't look super like i don't want to say narcissistic because it's not necessarily narcissistic like everyone kind of does that but i've noticed the feed looks better when you like mix pictures with yourself with pictures of other things like books like maybe a coffee you're drinking maybe if you go to the beach mix in pictures like that just like mixing up your feed and being more creative i think with the photos that you're posting i've learned that like posting dumps really helps with that so like literally just take pictures of everything like anything and everything because you never know if you might want to use that in a dump or just on your feed if you don't want like to post if you want to post things specifically to your feed that you don't want everyone to get notified by a trick is to just post a photo archive it and then unarchive it after like a week and then no one will get notified and it'll just be on your feed so that's what i do sometimes just to like make my feed look a little bit better i think just have fun with it to be honest and like don't overthink things that you're posting like i archive posts all the time i've archived so many posts over the years and just honestly have fun with it like i feel like you should be having fun with instagram i'm gonna do mascara now i have like two main ones that i like to use i use the chanel mascara and the gucci mascara these are like my favorite what is your favorite aspect of mauritanian culture i'm gonna talk about something material and then something immaterial so the material thing is like the clothes like i love Mauritanian fashion, Mauritanian cultural clothes, and I love especially like being more in Fulani, having like two different cultures with two different cultural sides to my clothing. So like there's the Menefe that is just absolutely like stunning. Like if you're a fan of like the Kaliji aesthetic, Menefe's are for you. And then I just love, you know, the traditional West African clothing. Like I love me a good Bazin set. So the clothes are definitely it. For me and they're definitely an aspect that have been present throughout my entire life like when i was younger my mom used to dress us in mauritanian clothes like even when we were just going to school on a random tuesday and at the time i didn't understand why she would do it and i was so embarrassed but now i look back and i'm just so grateful that she did that because you know i'm glad that we had that connection to our culture and also like we looked so good doing it and then in terms of like an immaterial aspect of Mauritanian culture that I really appreciate is just like the hospitality. Like Mauritanians are really, really warm and we have like an open door policy in Mauritania. Like people's doors are always open. You can literally go into anyone's house for lunch. They will give you the clothing off of their back. Where do you get inspiration for disclaimers aside? Everywhere, like just honestly the world around me from books, from movies, from TV shows from interactions with people, from conversations, from Pinterest, from social media, literally from ev everything and everywhere. You just have to be have a very open mind when it comes to being a creative and take inspiration from the world around you. What are you looking forward to? I'm really looking forward to honestly going back to school and getting back in the grind of classes. Like I didn't take any classes this summer and I definitely miss it a lot. Like I definitely could have taken online classes, but Alhamdulillah, like I, I'm, I've been making pretty good progress towards my degree and I'm actually like ahead by a semester so there's really no need to take classes this summer and summer classes can be pretty expensive otherwise I would have loved to like take an online class or two but I have taken summer classes in the past online and I'm just such a fan like I, I think everyone should do it um, especially if it gives you like more flexibility over the semesters to like take more classes that you want. 
Okay, so now we're gonna do brows. I'm actually trying out this new e.l.f. brow product. I usually use like the Merit Beauty one, but I wanted to try the e.l.f. This is called the e.l.f. Wow Brow. Um, and it's like a dark brown brow gel. I, I, I really need to be like light handed with this because I already have pretty naturally thick and full brows. So I don't want to look, I don't want it to look crazy. Where do you get your hijabs from? Mo mainly online. Actually, this hijab that I'm wearing is from a store in Garden Grove called Ala Noir. Like I, I discovered this one recently. Like I went to Camaria in Garden Grove and one of the workers there was recommending this place and then we went. They had a lot of cute stuff. They had a bias and, to, and stuff too. But for the most part, I get my hijabs from online boutiques like Culture Hijab, Veiled Collection. There's like Vela scarves. And I usually just wait until they have like their sales. They go on sale very often. So if you just like monitor their sites, like follow them on social media, you'll find that a lot, especially their chiffon scarves will go on sale all the time. Last question as I do my last step. So we're going to do lip gloss next. And I got this, I recently got this from Ulta. It's the Clean Fresh Maybelline Lip Gloss. It's vegan and cruelty free. They have these in a bunch of different colors and they're just like really light sheer colors. So love it. And it smells like strawberries, you guys. Like I'm obsessed. The last question is, is the Kindle worth it? So I actually got my Kindle almost a year now. My sister got it for me for my birthday last year. And then usually at the end, I'll just take my foundation brush and go over all my makeup. I personally think that the Kindle is really worth it, especially now that I found out that you can literally use sites like Z Library and Ocean PDF and download those ebooks onto your Kindle so you can basically like read for free. Definitely recommend getting it. I think it's really nice because you can like read in bed really easily, which for me, I would never want to read in bed like I got really lazy about reading in bed because you have to have the lights on you have to like prop up the book with this like you can just get comfortable and just like fully lay flat in bed so it's really really nice if you travel a lot and you like to like bring books along with you it's really nice and it's just nice to like have access to basically anything that i want to read like at any given point so i personally really like it i think you don't have to get like the best kindle out there you can get you know, the cheapest one, like the Kindle Paperwhite. That's the one I personally have. I think if you already read quite a bit, like it's really nice. This is the final makeup look. Very cute. I'm super excited because Alhana, the label, sent over some stunning abayas to try on. So I'm going to be trying those on for you guys today. I'm telling you guys, if you guys are looking for a site to shop for abayas from, check out this site because these abayas are just so stunning like the detail that goes into them is so stunning the quality is amazing and they're actually a reasonable price all of their pink abayas right now are on sale that are 15 percent off so definitely take advantage this is the first abaya isn't it just so stunning this is honestly like my personal favorite of the three that she sent over like absolutely obsessed with this one obsessed with the quality love all the detail that went into it this one is a full set it comes with this long sleeve dress underneath that you could honestly wear on its own super versatile love the fabric and then it comes with this like abaya over top it has these stunning silver detailing going down and then also on the sleeves and it's just such a pretty material like even the pink is just so pretty look at that it also comes with a, a matching hijab. This is not the one that came with it, but it has one that matches it exactly. It is just so cute and like so comfortable as well. The next one is this black and pink abaya. Love me a black abaya moment, but I feel like it's fun to pair black with a fun like pop of color just so that you're mixing things up and you're not always wearing the all black look, you know, just to break up the black just a little bit. Again, the detailing on this one is actually so insane. Like look at these sleeves i love the tool there's also some detailing on the sleeves as well comes with this like little wrap piece to like cinch in the underdress and the shade of pink is the same shade of pink on the last one i just love the black and pink combo and this is another one of the abayas that's also currently on sale finally we have this black and green one fully catch me at hogwarts walking around slytherin in this because oh you guys know how much i love green and this is just like a stunning emerald green. Look at the sleeve detailings on this one. 
This is what I call a voluminous abaya. As I mentioned, look at the detailing on this one. And then it actually comes with this like black hijab fabric attached to the edges of the inner side. It actually buttons up too if you want to keep it closed. I'm wearing a black dress underneath to keep consistent with like the black and green theme. Look at the sides. Like it's just very wide and nice and comfortable as well. Just cannot get over the color, you guys. It's the little details that just come together. Thank you so much to Alhana the label for sending over these stunning abayas. Make sure to shop. I will have the link in the description box if you guys want to check out these abayas. Literally no need to go to the homeland anymore to find abayas. Mm -hmm.